Hello, hello everyone, my name is Tistra and welcome back to my Fall to Samurai campaign using the Josai and we have a major problem. So, firstly, one of the most typical Shogunate factions, Edo or Edo, decided to flip. And then they, understandably, renounced their alliance with me, makes sense. And then they declared war. Also makes sense, right? Also, in addition to bring us a very difficult enemy to fight, as you can see, they have a pretty decent army, but this garrison should be enough to take care of that. In addition to that, the game thought, well, he he did take that out that uh, that initial uh, enemy pretty quickly. He does. He didn't appear to have any issues with them. Let's throw him a curveball. Let's uh, let's have the like most shogunate factions ever. Let's have them just flip randomly. Uh, yeah, let's do that. That seems like a good idea. So, Aizu, one of the starting shogunate factions, one of the very first ones. They are now loyal to the emperor. So I am surrounded by. I'm once again surrounded by Imperial supporting factions. Oh dear, this is not going good. Also, I should point out that uh, the Matsumai, the owners of Hokkaido, the, yeah, they are also Imperial. And usually they are always... Usually they are always, yeah, you know what I mean. They are uh, pretty much always Shogunate. So, I don't know, it's maybe that if you set the game on hard, the game just throws a few challenges at you. All I need is the Nagonaka to flip, and uh, then I would be really screwed. Uh, speaking of the Nagasaka, right? Nagauka. Never mind. I now have a trade with him. And uh, that's it. I haven't gotten any new trade routes, but I have uh, broken a trade route. Well, I didn't break it, these guys broke it when they declare war on me. But anyway, let's see what they choose to do. I have a garrison ready here, and I pretty much have decided to garrison up these two provinces in order to be ready for, uh, I'm guessing, a Aizuun attack. At least I'm not going to be the one I'm attacking first. I'm first going to focus on Edo. Uh, talking about Edo, this would be a very good province to actually capture their, their uh, capital. Because this is, I believe, the only uh, connecting point. Yes, it is. The only connecting point for the railway when we can actually build it. And of course, it would be good to have the next station on the line. But we can also have where this railway actually takes a detour up here and connects these provinces. That would be very good for us if we could actually capture every province they have, because, well, as I said, it's good to have all of them and have these guys connected. So we can eventually, not very quickly, but eventually, we can have all of these provinces basically as fast trial points. Anyway, I'm really just sitting back and uh, waiting for what these guys will do. It's pretty obvious. They will most likely go ahead and attack Shimosa. But I should have a garrison capable of uh, defending that. Unless they come with a ton of artillery. Then I would be having a very, very big problem. Anyway, let's end the turn and find out. So I <laughs> really only thing that actually is missing here is for a um, faction to declare war on me and immediately attack my capital. That would uh, pretty much be the only thing that's missing. Hmm. Okay, it's trying to bypass me. God damn it. I hate you. You braided that? Okay. Rangaku. My lord. A man with a passion for Rangaku. Learning both of our dealings with the Dutch. Le learning born of our dealings with the Dutch, never mind. Has been promoting Western ideals and technology, believing them to be the key to our national development. I'll definitely encourage him, because one, we don't want to anger the Western powers, 
and two, I think we'll get a either a trade bonus or a research boosting bonus. So yes. Also, what is this army? Spear units, cavalry. Oh dear, this is not looking good. This is really bad. My god, is this bad. We might have to lose a province here. And I'd rather not it be my capital. That would be uh, very bad. And uh, let's try not to make the situation worse. So, I'm going to try to fight them on the battlefield. Even though they have more troops than I do. And... I don't know if they have superior troops, but... Unfortunately, most of my army is levy victory, so... Oh, this is so bad. No, don't think we do this. This is horrendous. But I can't let them get to my capital. And if there's no way to stop them, at least I will have made a little dent to them. God, this is bad. Also, we can't really move these armies because we have just capture these guys, so we we'll still have the resistance to invaders, and this is still flipping, so they haven't gone through that phase yet. So we have massive problems. Look at this. Look at this garrison, and look at the public order. I don't think I have any choice, really. Can't repair that either. Damn. This is incredibly bad. Alright. No guess no glory. At least I have a little bit of cavalry. Of course they have more, because... Typical. But... Let's do, be do the best we can. Yeah, we do actually have more troops than they do, but... Yes. Once again, levy infantry. Let's try at least. Worst case scenario? It's an utter defeat. Best case scenario, we have, of course, the best case scenario is the scenario we win. But um, I am really more hoping for the middle of the road here that I deal a massive blow to that army and our garrison in either our capital or in. I can't remember the name of that city. Um, will be able to hold the rest of them off, and they won't be able to actually capture a city. One of the follow-up armies might. They have a few stacks coming down. But, let's at least try to stop these guys first. Hmm. I'm really hoping I'm not gonna get absolutely massacred in this campaign, like, um, like Warrior Sparta is right now. Yeah, I, uh, I saw his campaign, and um, he's definitely quite new to that. Uh, new to the brutality of all the samurai, even without mods. It's definitely one of the most brutal total warriors out there, if you count this as a separate game. And yeah, I do. It's significantly different from the original in order to be a, uh, a separate game, at least if you, <laughs> at least if you count uh, Napoleon Total War and Empire Total War as two separate games, as I do. So anyway, so yeah, he uh, he definitely has a bit to learn there, but uh, I'm certain that he will be able to find out what to do and uh, play it appropriately. Anyway. We can't defend this. We have to push forward. Also, I think I might have to place two units up in the front as bait. And I don't like to do that, but uh, it might be necessary. Just to, in the best case, soak up the cavalry or a melee unit, or while we are shooting at it, with our units in the back. 
Unfortunately, all of these hills are making it a bit clunky to defend it that way. I don't really know about this. But yeah, as I said, this is really a battle we have to fight. We don't really have any options. So yeah. There we go. Let's start the battle. And get going. Oh, I didn't actually group the general. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just shaking my head here. This... I don't have high hope for this. Thankfully, they... Yes, this is very good. They are thinking of themselves as the defenders, um, to be quite honest, they are the defenders, I was the one attacking. But that means that they will hang back and actually allow me to gain the higher ground, so... That's a bit of a silly mistake of you, but uh, I'm not gonna complain, because it's a very good thing for me. And if there's something I need right now, there's good things going for me. Maybe even push around here. Okay, I need my support line. You guys might actually be suited on top of this hill. Okay, this is brilliant. They are staying back and not really doing anything. That's pretty much exactly what I wanted to do. So they have a blunderbuss catchy. Do they work like the blunderbuss in the middle game? I sure hope not. Basically like giant shotguns. But of course, if they do behave like they do in the vanilla game, they need to be close in order for them to be in range, so... Yes, that's uh, a good trade-off. Also, the passiveness of the AI really allows me to stay back and wait until I have a bombardment ready. Which hopefully means that I will be able to use both of them properly. That's the general. Probably gonna drop the bombard right here. Yeah, probably not gonna hit cavalry because the moment they start to run away, they uh, they get out of the range of the bombardment pretty quickly. These ZR is stuck in spear formation. Same goes for these guys. I don't know about you guys. Might drop one here. And if they can leave that formation quickly enough, they might be able to escape. But let's see. Shells per volley 14. 14 chances of a bullseye. Let's do this. Somehow, these boats are in range, and you can see the smoke actually popping up from inland, so don't know how much sense that makes. Hmm. Forgot to can't see the tracers there, so it's really tricky to actually see the, the shells coming down. Anyway, yeah, you can see these guys are moving very slowly. There we go. Ooh, on the general. Nice. As much cavalry taken out as possible, I say. Nice. That was very good. That killed a lot of men. But yes. It could have gone better. It can always go better. But that was definitely a lot better than not hitting anything. So, I'm quite satisfied with that. Okay, we... We still are the attackers, unfortunately, so let's move up. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh, you're pathing around there. No, don't do that. I uh, wouldn't advise doing that. Can can I actually go through here? I think I can. It's hard to tell, really. Yeah, apparently I am able to do so. Okay, I'll have to get closer, but not so close that they um, that they trigger and attack me. Speaking of, never mind. They were just repositioning, I'm guessing. Hmm. Or are they? They are moving about. They might be shuffling their line just to respond to this, being maybe being seen as kind of outflanking. I don't know. Anyway, let's try to get you guys over there, and let's give you some backup. Hopefully that will do. Let's have cavalry come up there. Oh yes, this is the same problem. I'm thinking it's gonna be a bit trickier with these guys. They're a bit fatter units. Just the just the width of them. Hmm. Should be barely range. Oh the blunderbuss catchy. Hmm. Increased range, okay. Uh, why not then? Let's see, just turn these guys around, so as many men as possible can actually fire. Okay, line of sight is actually pretty bad here, so... Might not be happening anyway. Okay, these guys are definitely attacking, so... Also, I usually forget that. So... Oh, you can't actually fire. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Now you should be able to fire, and presumably that is about to wear off. Like my luck, the moment I'm actually in range. There we go. Well, they should be firing any second. There we go. Good. Very good. Also, another bombardment. I think this should be the target. This is where most units are concentrated, and if I'm lucky, I'm able to take out yet more cavalry. Just had to keep it out that the cavalry doesn't charge forward. That'd be very bad. Well, it wouldn't be very bad if only one unit charges forward, but... Yeah, I don't want to take uh, necessary casualties. Save the cavalry, do their job. Let's have these guys follow. And, general, try to keep up. Nice! Ooh! That's at least four bullseyes. That's definitely what we need in this battle. Two naval bombardments that I'm very, very happy with. Okay, you are sending up gunner attendants. Who are you firing at? Sure! Your general is under attack! General? Are you actually firing at the general? Why are you firing at these guys and the bulls are just missing? I'm going to go for the second option right there. Especially taking into account that there are attendants, so... They aren't really meant to be that skilled. Also, yeah, look at this like, sight here. They, they aren't targeting these guys, but they got very lucky there. So you can't fire? Hmm. Yeah, line, uh, line of sight is a fickle thing in this in this game. Also, I should point out that um, different from Empire and Napoleon, these guys will not fire when they are gonna shoot into a hill. So a very good change. Gunpowder wise from this game compared to the previous gunpowder games. Gunpowder centered games. Anyway, the blunderbuss catchy is going down, and they're not really doing anything to my guys. So if I can take out the unit and it hasn't done a single point of damage, then I should be very happy. The ammo is still good, but you are using a lot of it. You definitely are. Anyway, let's try to get these guys 
through, they will actually pass through that, thankfully. Are there actually any units that will outrange me? I don't think so. Rifle mercenaries. These guys, so they will actually outrange them. Not by a lot, but they will still outrange them. Yari attendants? No, definitely. They won't uh, outrange them. And actually, maybe the bow catching. But the rest of the units are mostly spare units. What are you using? Like you using. No, seriously, what are you using here? Gunner attendants? Oh, you're using heavy guns. Oh, that explains a bit. Yeah, they are I incredibly damaging, and it really makes sense that these guys would have been caught in the. Uh, I was gonna say crossfire, but you know what I mean. The uh, the bulls that were missing, and that actually taking out two cavalry because that's a dangerous weapon. That's a really dangerous weapon. It's actually piercing, and it goes through multiple units or multiple men in a unit. So that's why they are incredibly dangerous to go up against. Hopefully, when I go forward here, uh, maybe with you, I'll I'll be able to get more of them into my line of fire. Okay, I definitely need to focus on these guys with my rifle mercenaries. These guys are not really that important. Look at these weapons. So they are basically the heavy gunners from Shogun 2. The vanilla game, that is. Let's start a bit of outflanking with you guys. You should be having about the same range as... Well, worst case scenario, you have the same range as the blender bus. And best case scenario, you are the range them. Oh! I see, so the bow units. Let's see, well... Oh, you're invisible. You turned invisible. What did you? Yes, you did. Oh. Uh, pull back, I guess. Taking so many losses. This is horrible. <laughs> well, at least I'll have to stick around and try to take out a rifle mercenary. And let's bring up the second line. There we go. Kichu Kachi. Never seen that. Okay. So I might be able to use uh, to use some old uh, multiplayer tactics here. Eh? That is, of course, the simple, simple things of, uh, oh, you are pathing very weirdly, of uh, pulling back and pulling back your units and getting it caught in between multiple of your own units and basically killing them off that way. Matchlock catchy. Yeah, you are probably not going to do that well. Yeah, let's get every man possible into this. Also, you should do forward. And you may not be that skilled, but there are 375 of you. That does definitely account for something. You can't see them? Come on! I, I hate you. Can you please leave? I've actually started targeting rifle mercenaries. I don't think that has been going too well for me, actually. And by the way, apparently I outrange the blunderbuss. So, it's nice to see some positive things. Let's try to take out those guys. Uh, we are apparently not close to the. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna do this. Just out of fear of friendly fire. Uh, like from the cavalry. Doing a lot of damage. But yeah, you're outside of the support range of the spears, which uh, I find uh, I find a good opportunity to use my cavalry in order to take it down. Go away! Go away! Oh, you're actually not targeting the cavalry. You're targeting these guys. Huh? Well, if you want to, I'm not going to stop you. Okay, let's go. 
are shattered. Let's try to see if we can do some damage to these guys. How many men did we lose? 11. That's quite decent. Yeah, look at the whistling arrows. Doing a bit of morale damage there. Not liking it. Anyway, these guys were not that good in melee, apparently. Meaning that we should be able to take them out pretty quickly. Seeing that these guys don't actually seem to be wanting uh, anything to do with that fight. Also, Blunderbuss catching, they returned. No, that's a, not the unit, that was actually this unit. Okay, if the AI is just gonna stand here and make not that good decisions, I'm not gonna stop it, but I am gonna point it out that they are pretty much letting me win this. This. Well, it's definitely a battle I have the chance of winning, but it shouldn't be, to be honest, letting me win like this. Okay, we have to pull these guys back. They probably would return if I were to route them right now, but uh, let's not take any chances, shall we? Anyway, you guys are now ready to fire, and you're still firing downhill, so should still be doing uh, super effective damage against those guys. Oh, you actually been a target for an arrow barrage. That's not good for here. Okay, we definitely need spare units over here. And I clicked the direct attack order, and now it comes back to bite me. So, let's move back to the hill. But that should mean that we actually managed to get the scary unit to run away. Okay, you're going on a straight on attack here. I will therefore make the spay units go that way instead. Oh. Second rank. Fire! Point blank! Come on! Fire! Too late, apparently. Or maybe... Yes. Point blank shots. Very, very good. And there I caught the General Satoma tour. And I am shooting at it at the same time. Nice. Only problem here is the massive pileup on this flank from the enemy cavalry. That's a serious issue. Okay, let's try to pull back here. Let's see, uh, Yari attendants, you are gonna die. Look at the numbers, look at the numbers dropping. Oh dear. Another general. Uh, let's see, where did I put you? You guys. No, of course, I were using it, weren't I? Well, I guess uh, it's time for you to come back into action. But, to make it, I guess, a bit risky for our own units, but uh, it is for bettering our chances in this battle, we'll turn that line over to fight them. Also, that unit, right? 201 kills. I guess it did gain an okay amount of kills. Okay, let's hope 116 Saber Cavalry can take on Yariki, because these guys are now charging, therefore, this should be the best uh, possible moment to actually fight them. Also, this seems like a good place to commit on Spear units against Cavalry. Okay, and also keep my general nearby in order to stop this guy from routing. So one of the generals are dead, very good, and um, yeah, we are gonna do a load of the fire there, so I actually think I'm gonna do more like that. There we go. Anyway, I can't really focus on one place at a time. The Aryatans, you are doing... You are doing some work against my men. It's actually difficult to tell who's winning. No, these guys are winning, but actually that might be due to you guys fighting cavalry as well. There we go, the, the area tenants are favoring. I should be able to give them a few more bulls to the face before they run away. Another one of the generals has fallen, and this unit is gone completely. And... I think it's okay to say at this point that we won the battle. 
Not miraculously, but it was definitely a battle I... Uh, I seriously thought I was gonna lose. And I'm, I'm surprised I won that one. Incredibly surprised, actually. But no, it wasn't a miracle. I definitely... I definitely had the units, and if conditions were favorable, I could win this, and indeed I did. So, needless to say, it's important to mop up the remaining units. We don't really want any unit, any unit to survive this. Of course there will be units surviving this, we can't really do too much about it, but at least let's do our darndest to kill off as many of the enemy as possible. So this guy uh, actually is the last surviving unit. Surviving man in his unit, I should say. And there you go. He fell over and uh, died of a heart attack. Poor guy. He was 20 and everything and had a wife and uh, a few days later she, she got a letter explaining that uh, her husband has died, had died on the battlefield. And she thought, oh, I must have been so brave. Standing up and eventually dying of a grievous wound in the midst of the battle. And then further down the letter he says, he actually died of a heart attack. But it was on the battlefield, so it technically was a combat casualty. We hope you're the best. Signed, the Daimyo of Ida. Anyway, that was a long and horrible tangent. And there is actually another unit. Can't be many in that unit. Hmm, a few. I don't think they will really matter or make a difference. Also, did our guy level up? I think he did. He's now a four star. That's very good. Anyway, we're probably not gonna catch that guy, but let's try. Oh, if you're gonna cut like that instead of going right here, um, I'm not gonna stop you. Let's see if I can actually catch him. Probably not still. Well, the path, path thing you're doing actually makes it very easy for me to, ca to catch you, so... Well, you still have a chance. Come on. Mm, no, that's not gonna happen. I don't think that unit was gonna survive anyway, but uh, as I said, I'm not really want to be taking chances here. Not in this. Well... The entire situation my campaign is in, it's not really dire, but it has the potential to be dire. And a loss of one of my provinces right there it would be a blow to my economy, and it would mean I would have to use a lot of resources to recapture it. And as you can see, just from this was, was pretty much the best outcome. I also used a lot of my resources. Look at this. Yeah, this is of course not a gap, so we shouldn't really be thinking about the cavalry. Well, I guess you could partially think about the cavalry, because these were probably the guys who were chasing off the bow units and the mushlock units. But other than that, levy infantry. Good job. Rifle mercenaries, and... Hmm, I was expecting you higher. At least as a started battle. Uh, not as a started battle, but at the point where I found out that you fight off all the ammo, and you have only killed 200 men. I really was expecting more of that, but I guess the accuracy wasn't pinpoint, even though it was a lot better than it was in the, for example, the Napoleonic era, and the eras before that again. Anyway. In the end, we lost 1700, and killed 2500. Jeez. Okay, that army... That's actually consisting of one unit. Oh dear. For you. Yes, thankfully. The Ultras all decided not to be a dick. 
They then actually eradicated the entire army, and that's exactly what I needed. So, now for a few turns, I will be sitting back and enjoying my victory. While this army gains its previous strength. Actually, it would all take 5 turns until these guys are ready. 5 turns, 5 turns, 6 turns, and 4 turns. Very, very nice. Hmm. I guess I saw... Yeah, I actually saw 4 stars here, but there are actually... Uh, Quote-unquote, only 3 stars to his name. Uh, speaking of 3-star generals, we killed off their 3-star general. So, that really did go well for us. Anyway, we can't really do that much more this turn. So, I'll end the turn. And see what they do ab about that. Probably bring up their other enormous stack that they can afford with the, with the cheating money the AI gets sometimes. Yeah, rival shinobi. About that. 54% and a thousand co. That's so expensive and I need units. Yeah, I, I don't want you to actually be able to pull off something. Okay, we wounded you. That's good. Also, it gained us some XP. Very nice. And I do believe we are going, yes, we are going for the assassin trait and this guy right here. It's helping us a little bit, or this blowpipe here is helping us a little bit. That's really good. Let's go ahead and bombard some Edoans. Edoians. Oh yeah. I was going to use my money, weren't I? On some projects. Well, I completely forgot about that. Anyway. You probably have like, okay, three. That's good. Yes, of course, I uh, I lost the side effect of the... I can't remember the name of it, but basically the uh, event that gave me minus two to happiness. Which means I can take a few more units from these places and have them return. Or I guess they can uh, relocate to join the main army. That'll take a few turns, but uh, I have a few turns to sit back and uh, replenish my army. So that will grow, but that will go down. That will presumably grow once more. Maybe even one more time after that. But then we should hopefully have enough money to actually build a bit of uh, repressioning force. The cheapest. Our money can buy, of course. Anyway. We have plus three. Which means we can sacrifice three units. Actually, I think that artillery unit doesn't really count. Yes, it doesn't really count. So we can actually bring that with us. And have, uh, well, not the most effective artillery. Not at all, actually. But uh, artillery nonetheless. And combined with that, we have uh, two artillery pieces. So... That should be three. Yeah, there we go. So that will then be neutral. This should now hopefully start to go down when we pass the halfway point. And if not, well, you guessed it. Repression forces. Anyway, let's go down here. Hopefully we won't be cut off by these units right here. But there are not many of them. Hopefully we can we can use that. Anyway, let's end the turn. And just see what they do, and probably end right there. There we go, Aizu! They are now at war. So, what I dreaded has now come true. Unfortunately, that means that since we are taking taking away the garrison units, that of course means that these promises will be very susceptible to an attack from these guys, so hopefully it's probably this province they're gonna attack, isn't it? Actually, I don't think they can pass that. Yeah, they can pass that, but I don't think they will go this way and this way. I think there actually might be a mountain right here, a mountain chain 
or as you can see right here, which actually forbids them, or not forbids them, but stops them from going down this. Then again, they do have a port here. Never mind, I can see the road. Never mind. Yeah, but hopefully they won't be going that way. That's pretty much what I'm crossing my fingers for right now. But yeah, I do think we need to take out an enemy. And that enemy will probably be the Edo first. We're also gathering the unit into a good army, which is very good for them, and it's very good for the AI, and it's also good for me, because then I have a large target to hit. Okay, so I want to build more garrison troops, because right now we have uh, not that much, but uh, thankfully we have a few garrison units as well. Five of them, not that many, but better than nothing. So I would uh, want to recruit more there, but we have to use money to repair that. We can get a bit of the trade back. Speaking about trade, because we lost the trade route, we should be able to uh, give ourselves another. And that's not an option apparently. Yes, I will, pro I will probably doing a uh, land trade, so over here. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Also we have to repair this, but that's going to cost a bit, and uh, I don't have the money right now. Oh yes, that caused a bit of devastation. <sighs> so actually, I have to exempt them from tax either until I I repair this, or I give give them more repressioning forces. For we'll see. Anyway, we'll see about that in the next part. So hopefully you will join me then, where we will if we are ready. Go ahead and try to capture pretty much Tokyo. So, I hope you enjoyed what you saw today. A like, comment, and subscribe if you did. And, as always, I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.